Cool. Okay. Uh, thanks, John, for the introduction. Um, today we're going to look at something that I think, uh, I mean, John said that the future of variables is dubious. Uh, I tend to agree with him. But um, I think possibly c variables could become uh, something really, really important for the future of CSS and just building stuff in the browser. Um, it's fundamentally simple, like everybody uses variables for programming, right? Um, but I do think that they have uh, the ability to change the way that we think about CSS and hopefully it'll lighten the load of our tool chains, it'll increase our ability to share code, and uh, it'll make componentizing front ends far easier, I hope. Uh, this is my big dumb face. Uh, I'm at Ben Schwartz, you can get me on the internet basically anywhere. Uh, using that. Uh, this talk is called Getting Fickle With It, or We It, uh, or alternately, uh, I think variables are rad and super important, and hopefully by the end of this, you'll agree with me. Uh, today we're going to cover a uh, couple, couple of short, simple uh, concepts. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at preprocessors, because preprocessors have been doing variables for five, six years now. Uh, we're then going to go and have a look at some examples of what I would say are questionable taste. And then we're going we're to finish up by having a look at what we can actually do in the browser. So, oh cool. When I was preparing this talk, I, I began to uh, sit and think about variables and why they're important and sort of where they are in the scheme uh, of importance for CSS features. And I actually had an argument with my friend Paul who said, uh, nobody, variables, who cares? Uh, we, we've had them in preprocessors for years. Um, totally not important, right? There are such bigger, better things that we can do uh, to, to, build with front end, to build our front ends more efficiently or just nice, more nicely. I think Flexbox is one of those big things that's come along in the last couple of years that it, it makes building you know, complex layouts much more trivial than ever before. Uh, and they're really, really great for responsive design. Now, if you can use Flexbox, you can probably also use Calc. Has everyone seen Calc before? Wave at me, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so Calc is obviously for calculating, uh, which is another thing that um, preprocessors have given us for years. But for a long time, uh, people have wanted to have variables in the browser. They've talked about it for a long time, and thankfully, through things like SAS, um, you know, we're able to use them. I think variables are useful because they allow us to share code between projects. Um, perhaps uh, you want to share code that can be used cross-platform. So maybe you're building apps for the desktop, uh, for Windows and for Mac. Uh, and you're actually using a, a web kit or a, you know, a web uh, framework inside your, your actual shippable apps, um, perhaps we can use variables to theme and, and change the way that those front ends are actually composed and put together. Uh, next up, uh, I just wanted to, I guess, quickly get a, a lay of the land. Uh, put your hand up if you use SAS. Uh, put your hand up if you use less. A couple of you folks, okay. And then um, anything else? Any other preprocessor? One guy? Sorry? Stylus. Stylus, okay, yeah, great. CSS. And what, who, who uses absolutely nothing at all? No preprocessor. John? Tantec, yeah, okay. Interesting, cool. Okay, so uh, most of the room probably understand what a variable is, but I'm just going to give you this one slide in case you're looking at me like, what are you talking about? Uh, a variable is something where you can have a name, a name and provide a value. So uh, in this example, we can say, my thing is going to be my value, and we can use that somewhere else in our code. Cool. So in preparing this talk, I... Um, thought I'd look around for some examples of variables in use in the large. I had a look at Bootstrap, which is the, I think, largest project on GitHub to date. 
uh, 67,000 stars, which is pretty ridiculous. Um, and I thought that I would go and have a look at their, their variables file. Um, I was looking for something for you to be able to empathize with. Uh, so here it is, the start of their variables file, where they just have some colors defined here. This is less CSS. Um, I thought maybe I would try and show you the whole file. Um, so here it is. Uh, this is all the variables in uh, Bootstrap. Uh, for those of you who didn't get a, count, a chance to count them quite yet, it's 850 lines long. Uh, if you remove all of the spaces and hand significant lines of code, uh, it's 645. Now, Bootstrap I didn't want to lay into too badly, so I thought I'd have a look at other projects. Uh, Foundation uh, is even larger. It has 1,286 lines of variables. This isn't the CSS that builds the front end, this is the variables. So they're using them <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but I couldn't help but feel that I didn't understand what was happening here. So when I was preparing my talk, uh, I thought, you know what's happening here? Uh, people are building uh, these, these web frameworks that are basically componentized, you know, their modals and their buttons and their different pieces of UI. Um, but one thing that you get with a preprocessor is that it hides basically everything. You keep smashing in CSS until it looks about right. Organization is up to you. And so now I'm going to, uh, let's see. OK, so it's just a button, right? How hard could it be? Um, I don't think the problem is a huge variable file, it's that you can't take what you want and leave what you don't. And so for this, you know, it, it may as well just be a huge CSS file that has no organization at all. So I wanted to quickly talk about modularity. Uh, I'm going to look at an example of an island. Um, an island is, for better lack of a word, a box. It's an abstraction that I use in front end stuff. Uh, it's a box of content that's kind of separate to other bits of content and maybe visually, you know, it might be a box, but it might have rounded corners, or it might have some crazy effect, I don't know. Um, so what I like to do is I like to have my directory structure organized with abstractions and modules, uh, a main file, and a variables file. You could, uh, I use SAS, but you could use anything here. Um, my variables file, to begin with, just has a couple of colors. Hopefully it doesn't get to 1,000 lines. But this is what I want people to start thinking about doing when they're composing modules. I want you to import your variables, and that can still be a 1,000 line file, if you want. Try not to. Um, but then what I actually like to do is I like to reset the variables. So when you come to this file and you're working with island, you get to see that I'm using a border color of gray lighter. And it doesn't matter that the gray color is maybe CCC or E, like, it, it doesn't matter. Um, but when it becomes really useful is when you've got a, a, uh, an extension of the island class. Maybe we want to have a dark edition where uh, we're actually starting to apply some style here. Um, so what I like to do is nested inside the selector, I like to actually have another variable that says, hey, this is the dark edition. And it's very clear as to what's going on here. We'll come back to this really soon. Actually, I've got to move along. Um, I quickly wanted to talk about uh, current colors. Who's heard of current color? Like three people who are at CSS Conf, I think, maybe. Um, OK. Hey, yo. This new Firefox 29? No, nightly. I lied. OK, so I'm going to show you current color real quick. Current color has been around for quite a long time already. Um, we've got a button here, as you can see, and I've got a color. Uh, but if you look, I've actually got a border set to half a rem solid current color. What's actually happening here is it's using the color uh, declaration from another class, from the button class. So if I go and change this, oh, my window is back on this screen. 
If I go and change this, you can see that the button color actually changes with it. And that's, that's cascading through the CSS. Pretty cool. Thank you. Wow, full screen is difficult backwards. Okay. Um, Simurai, who spoke at CSSConf, uh, has actually used current color a lot in a project called Digit. And they're actually using it to, uh, to, to have fully themable components here, which is kind of interesting. But now we're going to have a quick look at variables actually in the browser. Um, I'm using Firefox Nightly. Uh, it is the only browser, as far as I know, on the face of the earth that uh, actually has variables built in at all. Okie dokie. Uh, Cool, okay, so this is how you set a variable. I'm using the root selector here, which basically equates to HTML uh, or like the, you know, the document. It could be like an SVG or something like that. Uh, I set a variable using this sort of double flag looking thing here. So I could set another variable, like header is green, and the control base color is gonna be lime green. And then you can see on the button, I'm using variable, uh, double flag, control base color. Now, you can do a little bit more than this. Um, there's a couple of things to notice. Uh, the base color here is cascading. So we're setting the variable on the root, and then it's cascading down to the button. What we can actually go and do is, for this particular button, maybe we want to make it uh, huge. Um, I want to add a class. It doesn't matter. That's cool. Um, Oh, I'm also using uh, current color here, just because I'm stupid, I don't know. But we can actually change the variable. Hey, oh. how do I spell color in English? Come on, oh, I broke something. This is not gonna work out well. Where's my U? Thank you. I spelt it in English. There it is. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it actually cascades. So we can actually create components that will have uh, you know, a global color, but maybe we want to override it for a particular component, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and soon, uh, but not yet, I'm going to show you one more thing. There is actually a JavaScript interface to this. It's not, it's not complete. It's not shipped in every browser. Um, so I'm going to use a jQuery looking selector thing here. And I'm going to say root style set property This is really not fun backwards. Oh, what is the variable called? Control base color. Oh, you idiot. Mm. Red. Oh, you. <sighs> Why didn't that work? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need your help on spelling again, I'm sure. Mm, no, nah, it doesn't matter. We'll just skip over. It's cool. I'm running out of time. Hmm? Oh, the, uh, this one? There it is. Thank you, person. <laughs> Thank you, kind human. Okay, cool. We're going to roll on. Uh, and soon, but not yet, we're going to be able to have um, the ability to go and change them in, in JavaScript uh, for real on an element. So you'll be able to select the element and then change the variable that's applied to that element. Now, variables hasn't been a smooth path uh, in its inception. Uh, we had this syntax in the beginning where you would actually have to state the type of the variable that you were setting. Uh, that sucked, and that was 2011-ish. Uh, then there was the dollar sign syntax. 
And that was somewhere in the last two years. And now we've arrived where we have. Uh, if you go and look at the Blink Dev uh, Google group, you'll see this post, if you look for it, intent to remove CSS variables. And you don't need to be able to read it, but the important line in here is, CSS variables is not shipped. Removal poses minimal disruption to the web. Firefox has an implementation in progress available on their nightly channel, and WebKit has removed their implementation, which we inherited. But it'll be fine. We've been there before. We had Flexbox, we had fleet feature fags, flags, and we had tweener syntaxes. So we had this kind of crap with Flexbox, and it changed, and it's been a little bit tricky to get there. But I think in two to three years, variables will be something that we can use, and we can start to put them in apps that we ship on Macs and PCs, and we can put them in iPhones and so on and so forth. Um, and in the meantime, we can try and use projects like Rework. Rework is a post-processor, I guess, or maybe a preprocessor styles built with it, right? Yeah, no? Um, and there's actually a project this came online one hour ago, so it's kind of new. Um, it's a uh, filter that you can run through, re you can run your CSS through rework, through, through rework and through rework vars, uh, and it'll um, just transpose the variables in there for you, just like SAS would. So you can start to pretend that you're doing it the real way. Uh, there's a couple of projects around there. So just write it, just enjoy it. Skipping over. So hopefully we can have smaller, more simple build chains. We can drop some of the tools that we've accumulated over the last few years. And we can share. Thanks, guys. <laughs>